Freedom's greetings Helldivers, welcome back to the channel for your fix of Helldivers 2 news and leaks. Buckle up troopers, today's intel drops are gonna be more explosive than an Apalm airstrike. We've got a brand new major order which might be impossible to complete, intel on incoming armor upgrades that will have you stomping bugs in style, expected updates to our galactic map and some major story leaks that might just change the way you see the war for democracy. Well, maybe. But before we deploy, remember citizen viewers, democracy thrives on participation. So hit the like and subscribe like your life depends on it, because in the mobile infantry, it kinda does. Alright, enough salutes, let's get cracking. Firstly, congratulations Helldivers on completing the previous major order. The Automaton comms array on Truce has been decommissioned, but new intel suggests that the mechanized socialist scum is working on a new type of aerial gunship, which means that we are bound to get the Eagle air-to-air -air stratagem sooner rather than later. We also have our new major order to complete. Operations with this assembly moves onward to phase 2. Our next objective is to attack the planet Tibet, as it's a significant producer of illegal automaton units. Dispensing liberty to the planet will impact the enemy's capacity to replenish their forces. However, there is an issue here. We had around 35% of the Helldiver's forces on the Terminate front, causing us to lose a defense campaign on Dropnir, or we had to take Cubania in order to cut off the main supply for the automaton forces. We now have to retake Dropnir to enable FTL lines to Eubania before taking on Tibet. Sadly, we don't have in-game representation of the supply lines, which is something we'll talk about later in the video, so a lot of Helldivers had no idea of what needs to be done, hence the current situation. The major order is likely unwinnable. We also have new intel on an impending automaton counter-attack. Our scouts have managed to intercept messages suggesting plans for a significant push. This likely means that all of the previously leaked information I've covered in my previous videos is true, and a battle for Cyberstan is not only possible, but inevitable. Now, let's get on to the juicy stuff and talk about the armor updates. The devs in Arrowhead are actually extremely active over on the Helldivers 2 Discord, which is so refreshing, and I'd like to cover a couple of interactions which happened recently. As we are all aware, at the moment, armor doesn't feel particularly great, especially heavy armor, since the difference in the armor stat doesn't seem to be that impactful. One of the people over on the Discord server had this to say. Any chance heavy armor could see some improvements in the near future. A lot of the community thinks it's not very good which is something I do have to agree with. I think that this user hit the nail on the head, and in his reply we have one of the devs, Twinbeard, who shared his thoughts on the matter. We pretty much agree, or to be a bit more diplomatic, that there are things we want to improve. The goal is to make the armor stat be and feel more differentiated and specific. Light is quick, stealthy, good for stamina, medium, all around, and heavy is sturdy and can take a hit but slow. There are changes that personally I'd absolutely like to see in the game as they'd allow us to improve on our loadouts even further. At the moment I am a big fan of the Quasar Cannon, and if the heavy armor was sturdier it would make it much easier for me to live out my desire of being a heavily armored cannon wielding psycho of a dive team. What do you guys think? This continued with, to be honest I wouldn't hate it if the heavy armor was even slower than it is now but behaved almost like juggernaut armor where you can simply shrug off things or deflect them the way enemy armor works. Or another interesting balance idea would be losing the ability to die. And these ideas are not that bad if you ask me. When Beer's response was, yeah, 100%, like I said, we're discussing it. Lots of balancing stuff as soon as you make such big changes, so give us time. For me, it is encouraging to know that the developers of the game are actively listening to the feedback provided by the community and are working on implementing ideas that would make the game better. It obviously is not 100% confirmed that this is going to happen or that it will happen right away, but just knowing that it's not unlikely is something I'm excited about. The last question in the discussion was a very valid point. I'm just trying to think of how heavy armor can be put up to par with light armor. As some have said, maybe increase the tankiness a bit more, or maybe have situations and missions where heavy armor is the best choice. And when Beard gave us great insights on his thought process. This is just me brainstorming, but heavy armor could be made to carry larger weapons, withstand damage and dish out more damage, carry large stuff for teammates, break stuff, etc. Light could have increased built-in stealth, reach areas heavy couldn't, but be very vulnerable and so on. I'm sure there's plenty we can do, all in due time, patience is virtue and so on. Great stuff all around, the one thing I'd like to see is maybe having extra ammo slots or for example being able to carry mission related items like the SSD stratagem without having to sacrifice the ability to use your primary weapon. Maybe having a small version of a supply backpack would also be cool, do you guys have any ideas? Let's move on to the improvements of our galactic map. Have you ever wondered why when there's a major order to liberate the planet like there is for example currently Tibia, 
The planet itself cannot be attacked right away, but other planets in the node are accessible. That's because we actually need to open supply lines in order to have the required battlefield resources to launch an offensive on our target. However, this is not something which the game makes clear to us, or if it did once during the tutorial, I've totally forgotten about it and I'm sure I'm not the only one. So one of the players in the Helldivers 2 Discord had this to say. Is there any plans to make the hidden supply lines on the galactic map more obvious in-game? Currently, there is no way to tell what order planets need to be liberated in just by looking at the map, which is especially confusing when a major order is to take a planet somewhere in the back. People are using external websites for this information, and it seems like it would be a huge quality of life improvement if it were available in-game. Now, I wasn't sure about this being a huge quality of life improvement, but it would definitely be much better if we were able to see at a glance what's the order of attacks that we as a community need to carry out, as it would avoid situations like the one we are in currently. In his response, Twinbeard said, In a short reply, yes we are. We are aware and will hopefully be able to improve it some. The challenge is doing it well without the galactic war map being bloated. For me it's awesome to see that they're indeed working on this, however I see his point that having these supply lines could be a little bit bloated or even a bit overwhelming for new players, so it might make sense why the execution is not something that we'll see happen instantly. But still, it's really nice to see that it's a feature we should get in the near future. Alright Helldivers, we're about to get into the story leaks, so I'm giving you this official spoiler warning. If you don't want to have the story spoiled for yourself, this is the warning. I would appreciate it if before you left you would hit the like and subscribe to the channel though. We good? We good? So let's go. We are about to go over leaked subtitles which pretty much tell us what is going to happen next. I will give you a summary of what is said and you can read what the subtitles actually are right here on screen. I'll try to do these in a chronological order to the best of my abilities. Intel warns us of a massive surprise automaton invasion 10 times larger than anything encountered. Cyberstan and nearby planets are the targets. These new automatons motives and origins are shrouded in mystery. This brutal attack shatters peace talks with the automatons. Helldivers will deploy for a critical counteroffensive to retake Cyberstan, believed to be the central hub of this new threat. We faced mere fragments of their forces before. Now, we'll fight for Cyberstan's liberation against this overwhelming new automaton army. We also have further story leaks about the Terminate threat. The Termocyte, initially successful in wiping out 99.6% of the Terminates across the barrier planets, backfires on Meridia. It mutates the remaining bugs, creating a horrifically fast breeding super colony. Scientists are scrambling for a new solution, with rumors of a weapon based on Dark Fluid, an alien tech from the First Galactic War. But wait, there's more! A Dark Fluid research facility on Moradesh suffers a catastrophic meltdown, collapsing the planet into a black hole. The incident causes massive casualties and raises serious questions about the stability of this dangerous technology. Despite these setbacks, Helldivers are going to be on the front lines and you're going to be tasked with containing the Meridia super colony while a new weapon is developed. And lastly, our old enemies, the squid-like Illuminate, are going to come back. It seems they did not appreciate Super Earth's generosity after the first galactic war. Analysts detect that their energy signatures are near a dark matter anomaly, possibly linked to the destructive dark fluid weapon we are going to use. Senator Killjoy wants to hit them first, but these advanced aliens might be tougher than expected. Remember, their outposts often have heavy shields, so we'll have to pack our strongest weapons. We are already fighting the Terminates and the Automatons. The war for the galaxy is about to get even more complicated. So gear up Helldivers, time to show the Illuminate why they should have stayed gone. I would like to also share with you a visual representation of how the timeline should go. While going through the subtitles, I kind of disagree a little bit with this timeline, as we are already in a battle with the socialist bots. But other than that, this is the most likely curse of events that we're going to see, with a battle for Cyberstan coming shortly. Then, another skirmish with the Terminate Menace, culminating in us being the reason for the Illuminate's return. How will this play out with the current course of events we cannot truly know, however, I do really like how the events are turning to a head. The part I really love about this is that, as you can see, depending on what happens on Meridia, there's two possible timelines that we could get into, but both of them converge on us fighting the Illuminate and getting them as the third enemy race in Helldivers 2, which is pretty freaking awesome. There's some weird mind control stuff that's being talked about, new weapons and mission types, new mission types would be freaking dope. So we'll see what happens, but I'm excited. How do you feel about this fam? But that's about it for the video, thank you so much for staying to the end. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like, 
and subscribe to the channel because at the moment over 99% of you are not even subscribed so you are not getting notified for my videos. But we are on the road to 1k subscribers and hopefully we'll hit that soon. But until that happens, it's deck fam. Make sure you do your hell dives and make sure you stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one.